Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I are with Bill Jordan, the his voice philosopher his voice he said my name. extraordinaire of the oh, boom Bill generation. Bill Jordan. Bill, Bill Jordan. Jordan. We're with Bill Jordan. <laughs> That's excitement and extraordinaire. Wow. Hey, Bill. Uh, I, before we started this morning, I was uh, out in the living room, and on our living room, we have all these beautiful, on the coffee table, we have these beautiful coffee table books, as they call them, yeah. but among them is a little tome full of wisdom ah. called Embrace the Boom. I happen to have them all around my house. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You can't get rid of them, can you? Look, I've had anyway, them all around the my house. Book. Um, and I wanted to ask you about, you've got uh, your best practices, and um, they're all fascinating. They're all wonderful uh, pieces, simple pieces of advice. But I wanted to ask you, I've marked number 15. This one is a little, I thought, a little more sophisticated. Uh, and I wanted to ask you about it. It's expect the unexpected. Embrace the boom, practice number 15. Yeah. Now, where did you get? Expect the unexpected seems uh, rather different from uh, uh, some of the others. Where, where did you get that one from? Um, well, it, it, to, to flesh it out further, uh, it's expect the unexpected and when possible, be the unexpected. So I find that most people, when you say, and, and, and most of these practices are, are, are rather cliche, but hopefully in the book, I, I give you a new way to look at things because sometimes we don't think about cliches because we've heard them all our life. So the stay in the present, you go, yeah, yeah, I know to stay in the present, but do you practice that? Do you really work at that? You know, the serenity prayer, the main one that God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. We know that's a good idea, but do we really work at that? So when I say expect the unexpected, when I say that to most people, their brain jumps to that means expect to go out in the morning and your tire is going to be flat. Expect to go and be, you're going to be late for that appointment. Expect something bad. I think we default to expect the unexpected means something negative. But when we stop and think about our lives, and I know for my case, I'd be sitting there at work one day and out of the blue comes a phone call from a program director at a radio station across the street wanting to know if I'd be wanting to come over and work over there. So there's some good surprises that happen too. I mean, that is, what was it, Nietzsche, the philosopher that said out of chaos comes order or out of order comes chaos. That's the whole, you know, that little squiggly thing, the yin yang diagram, one sure. side's white, one side's black. If you look it, at it, basically I, infinity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and mm. what I had never noticed before was in the white section is a little black dot. And in right. the black section is a little white dot. Yes. And so that means that order can come from chaos and chaos can spring from order. So yeah. Expect the unexpected. We need to, I think, frame our mindset is you can expect good things as well as, you know, don't be in that mindset if anything unexpected happens, that it's going to be negative. Good things can come unexpectedly as well. And what I mean by when it when uh, and when possible, be the unexpected, that might be for me instead of pulling into the grocery store parking lot and there's somebody who's left their shopping cart five steps from the cart corral, instead of fuming because it's kind of pointless because it happens all the time, how about just putting the cart back? How about just using that cart maybe? Although I feel it's got some bad mojo to it, I will normally put it back in the corral and maybe let them sanitize it or something. So. You see what I'm saying? I mean, but or or if you go into the store, that store, and you can't find something, and, and a clerk happens to be especially helpful with you helping find something, right? Uh, to tell the take take a moment and go to the customer service desk and tell them that you know, uh, Lori over on checkout aisle seven was especially helpful and really you know great personality and very positive today. So I want you to know you've got a great employee. That's what I'm talking about is if you can make somebody else's day and, and they don't even have to know it, that it was you. Yeah. They could just maybe hear later on, hey, we had a customer that really spoke well of you. I, I was making pizza 
at yeah, one of the I, local I, grocery I, stores and just stop on the way out and go, hey, she really took care of me. That was exceptional customer service. Yeah. I love the uh, positive aspect of it. The positive, sure. But that it it's spin. It's really, um, I read into it, and this is the wonderful thing about the book, of course, is that your practices can be interpreted in many ways and personalized. And so that's that's why I think the book is so valuable. But what I get out of it is be spontaneous and be ready for anything. Don't don't get stuck right. in a mindset. Right. As far as what's going to happen to you in a reactive phase, but also in a proactive phase, an active phase of looking to make somebody else's day, even if it's handing out a quick compliment. I mean, I've, guys, did you ever think, and maybe I'm wrong, I know I never thought growing up that I would ever look, and we've talked about this in a previous uh, topic, previous video, I never thought that I would look at a woman with gray or silver hair and find that attractive. And now yeah. I think it's beautiful. Now I think it's beautiful to wear, a, hopefully not in a creepy way. If I see a lady going by and she's got, you know, a full head of, of uh, silver hair, I'll tell them. I say, I, I love your hair. My wife is letting hers go. I think it's magnificent. Well, as you know, long as you that don't might, that might make their it, okay? day, you know. Yeah. Well, well, Bill. I, I no, I want I want I want to share something. I want to share something. Uh, something I took in a positive light at four o'clock this morning before we did our taping. Uh, the something that rarely happens, the float in my toilet broke and wouldn't stop running. In fact, overflowed a bit. And the first thing I thought was, thankfully, I caught it quickly, so it didn't flood everything, number one. And number two, boy, I'm glad it happened now because it only happens about every 15 or 20 years when we were not out of the house. Exactly. And then I'd come home and the water would be flowing out the front door. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, so, you know, it's a way to try to make uh, uh, something good out of everything. But, you know, well, some things you well, can't. Well, Art, that sounds like, I Is can't remember 15? the number. Bill, it's attitude of gratitude. Where's that one? Attitude of gratitude. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's well, now, my gratitude. attitude of gratitude is the friendship I have with the two of you. What more could a person want? <laughs> Well, I mean, that's a good thing, too. My wife and I actually every night, pretty much as before before the lights go out, what good happened today? And there are days when you just think it's been a horrible day. Hmm. But there's always something good in that day. Yes. And we always try to end the day with a little checklist. Well, this happened and this happened and this happened, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I woke up with you. Not you guys, but you know what I'm saying? I'm talking <laughs> to my wife. I woke yeah. up, you know, woke up you with should you. Be, so that was, you that should was a be good so lucky. day. You should be yeah, so lucky. Okay, right, right, right. So <laughs> anyway, this book, I mean, I, it, you know, I, I, it just occurred to me. It's like, it's, I'm not trying to tell you what to think, but I am trying to help you how to think, maybe. It, because my thinking has changed in the writing of it and in the rereading of it and, uh, and reviewing of it. So uh, I hope that will do that for you. Uh, you can get it at Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, Walmart.com. Uh, it's direct from the publisher at uh, WebsterPublishing.com. Uh, and if you want to go to the, my, uh, my my personal like Shopify page for the mug or a link to the YouTube videos or for a link to the book, uh, that's at BillJordanEmbraceTheBoom.com. And always a pleasure to share time and uh, spend a little philosophy with you guys. Well, let's thank you, Bill. Here's a toast to you. And if you read us you. out. Live your life. Forget your age and embrace the book. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.